My name is Hannah, and this is my No Buy Year. So this is the second in what has turned out to be just a two-part video series, a two-part exploration of mineral sunscreens. The first one is called The Search for the Best Mineral Sunscreen, and I will absolutely link it down below. In short, I am running out, or at this point I have run completely out of the moisturizing lotion that I have been using as a sunscreen. It's the Paracone MD Photo Plasma Broad Spectrum SPF 30, but this product has since been rebranded, and it's still available in the exact same formula, but the jar looks different and it has a new name. It's now called the Paracone MD Vitamin C Ester Photo Brightening Moisturizer. So I love this product. It's a fantastic moisturizer and it's also SPF 30. It works beautifully as a facial sunscreen and I've been wearing it every day for a couple of years. However, over the course of my no buy year, I've had the opportunity to really start to see how much my products are costing me. I calculated that I am spending about $300 a year on this product. And as much as I love using it, I decided that I thought I could do better. And thus began the search for a cosmetically elegant mineral sunscreen that costs less, hopefully far less, than $35 an ounce. I do still have the little bags with the little sample pots in them, but I'm not going to hold them up one by one because they all look the same and they're all empty. I'm just going to tell you the name of the product I'm talking about, and I'll obviously put a picture of the bottle up on the screen. So the first sunscreen I sampled was the Clinique Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Mineral Sunscreen Fluid for Face. I had gotten the sample, I had brought it home, and when I was actually on camera last time talking about this product, introducing this product as something I was going to be testing, I started reading out all of the specs and I realized that the bottle was only an ounce. So I had seen the price, which is $28, and I had thought, wow, $28, that's so much less than the $70 that I was paying for the Paracone MD. But I hadn't realized until that moment when I was filming myself talking about it that it's $28 just for an ounce. So if I were to use the same amount every day, I would go through it twice as fast as I was going through the one that I was trying to replace, and I would have to buy it twice as frequently, and it would cost just as much. And I did not like it. It's very, very, very thin. It's like a watery, it's almost like an essence. And for that reason, it was a little bit hard to tell how much I was using, for one thing. I also felt like a little bit went a really long way, but that made me feel worried about whether or not I was getting enough sun protection, because I'm committed to using that quarter teaspoon every day on my face, and I'm used to measuring that out. And I kind of felt like with the Clinique, because it was so thin and it was greasy, that quarter teaspoon was like a lot of fluid sunscreen on my face and I was tempted to use less but I also didn't want to use less because I didn't want to not be using enough sunscreen to protect my face. And arguably if the formula is intended to be fluid maybe you can get the sun protection you need with less sunscreen. Maybe that's why it costs so much per ounce. Maybe it actually lasts longer than a cream and therefore is more cost effective than than it seems, but whether or not that is true, I didn't like the formula on my face. It was so greasy and it never soaked in, and I have dry skin. I'm pretty diligent about giving my sunscreen time to soak into my skin because I don't wanna be putting any product on top of that before it has soaked in. I don't want to run the risk of my primer kind of mixing in with my sunscreen, watering it down, making it less effective, picking it up off the skin, etc. So I did that with the Clinique, and it just never soaked in. It was like a grease on my skin, and I would give it five minutes, I would give it 10 minutes, but I ended up having to come back in with my primer on top of what felt like an oily, greasy face. And it didn't feel like anything about the texture had changed between the time that I put it on and the time that I went in with my primer, even if I gave it a good deal of time to soak in. So price aside, texture aside, everything aside, that fact, the fact of it's not soaking into my face, 
that really would have knocked it out of the running for me no matter what. And I know that a lot of you in the comments of that video said that you like the sunscreen or that you use the one that's designed for the body. This is obviously not to say that it would be bad for everyone or that it would be greasy for everyone. It just definitely didn't work for me. I tried the sample, I was like, no girl, no, and I moved on. Next up is the Shiseido Ultimate Sun Protection Lotion Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Wet Force for sensitive skin and children. I had high hopes for this Shiseido sunscreen because it is such a good value. Shiseido is kind of fancy, and the bottle is expensive. I think the bottle is like $42, but it's 3.3 ounces, which works out to about $13 an ounce. I think that the reason that it's such a good cost per ounce for this product specifically is that it's intended to be for face and body. And it really is a sunscreen for like going to the beach. It's really for when you're active, when you're out in the sun, when you're in the water, when you want to reapply. And it wore on the face in the manner of a sunscreen that's designed for something other than cosmetically elegant everyday wear under makeup. So I do have respect for this product because if I were like a bougie mother with three little children running around in the sun all the time, I would totally buy this and like slather my children with it. If I currently were a mother with three little children, I wouldn't be able to afford a $42 sunscreen for that purpose. Once I figured out what it really is for, I realized that it is kind of a bougie price worthy of Shiseido. But even as such, it would have been cool if it had worked for me anyway. It would have been really convenient if I had kind of gamed the system and found this body sunscreen that worked for my face, blah, blah, blah. But here's why it didn't work. First of all, it kind of had a, a blue cast. Like, it really had... A pretty palpable blue cast that did go away mostly and I usually am kind of okay with a cast on sunscreen I can kind of work with my products and work with it but this it didn't it's like the cast made me feel like the product was still sitting on my skin so there was that was the first thing that every time I put it on I was like Ooh, it's a little bit blue but then the thing about it is that it's kind of film forming and it is called wet force. If you read more about the claims, it kind of, it claims to be film forming basically. It claims to kind of form a water resistant barrier on the skin that's really 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 thin. It's using like wet force technology to give you a protective skin of product that repels water so that you can frolic in the sun and it won't be too thick and goopy, but it also won't wash off in the water. But what that meant for me was that when I put it on my face, it would kind of dry down like better than the Clinique. It didn't stay greasy, but it then it was just, it was there. It was there. And if I even used a the slightest bit too much, and it, like the Clinique, it was very, very, very thin. So it was hard not to use too much because I was trying to use enough. But if I even use the slightest bit too much, then when I went to put on my primer, it would like reactivate the product, it would like re-wet it, and it was obvious that it was picking up off of my skin and mixing it with the primer. So I would put it on, it would be kind of bluish white, then it would sink in and dry down and look kind of velvety and nice actually. It would, it would kind of look like Mm, like a mattifying primer almost. But then when I went in with a primer, suddenly it was there again. It was white again, it was creamy, and it was it was obviously like lifting up off of my skin. And that worries me not just on the cosmetic level, but on the level of sun protection. And on top of all of that, it had a bad smell. It had kind of like a weird plasticky, like pool toys smell. I had hopes for it, but my hopes were <laughs> quickly dispelled and it was a solid no. All right, the third sunscreen on the list here is the Pharmacy Green Screen. I had high hopes for this one too. I like the packaging, I like the aesthetic of the brand, I really like the claims. This is one that definitely foregrounds itself as a skincare product and as a multi-purpose protector. So it's supposed to protect your skin not only from the sun but from other environmental factors. And I do live very close to downtown LA and I walk through downtown every day to get to work and I work downtown so 
it is smoggy, there's a lot of pollution, there's a lot of dirt, the air doesn't smell good. And so protecting my skin from my general environment as well as from the sun is something that I think about. So I really, really was drawn to this product because of those claims. One thing that I wasn't too hot on was the price. It is $21 an ounce. I believe it's 1.7 ounces for $36 or something like that, but it breaks down to $21 an ounce. So that is just about the upper limit of what I felt like I would be willing to pay. I was kind of hoping that this would be the one, and I was also kind of hoping that it wouldn't be the one because of the price. But I, I was gunning for it. I think you could kind of tell in the first video that I was gunning for the pharmacy green screen. It's the thickest one that I had. It's like a moisturizer. It's like a heavy moisturizer. And it, it does have a little bit of a white cast initially, but I felt like it became clear really right away. It was soothing, and it felt like skincare to apply, so I really did like that. It felt a little bit like sunscreen. I would say it felt 75 to 80% like skincare and the other 20 to 25% it felt like I was applying like an old fashioned mineral sunscreen. But I did feel like I was putting a hefty quenching lotion onto my skin when I used this product and I liked that. It did take about five minutes to soak in. It was one that I absolutely could not crunch in terms of how long I waited before going in with my primer. And as long as I waited those five minutes, it wore beautifully under makeup, makeup applied beautifully on top of it, and all around I felt pretty solid about it, pretty into it, for everything except the price. And obviously the price is fine, is fine, but it's not ideal. It, it checked all the boxes, let's just say that. It checked all the boxes. So next up on the list is the Super Goop skin soothing mineral sunscreen SPF 40 and I believe it costs around the same amount as the green screen but there's more it breaks down to $12 an ounce so that's fantastic that's the lowest price of anything that's on the list so far this was a very very well performing mineral sunscreen I was actually quite impressed my notes are thin no white cast, soaks in fast, feels nice, smell didn't bother me, good under makeup if you wait, similar to the green screen. It's being billed as a skin soothing mineral sunscreen, so I believe it has ingredients in it that are meant to calm redness and soothe the skin and moisturize the skin. It's SPF 40, which is higher than a lot of the other ones. It's just, it's a very strong contender, and the price, $12 an ounce, very, very strong contender. I was impressed by its efficacy, <sighs> but I found it so unexciting. And criticize me if you will, judge me, but judge me kindly. I just could not bring myself to commit to buying something called Super Goop and in such an ugly bottle. Maybe I shouldn't be so, I shouldn't act so embarrassed and coy about this. This is just my life. I, I love beautiful things. I love luxurious things. I'm coming to terms with the fact that I'm not going to be a person who has the money to live a luxury lifestyle and to own all luxury items. That's just never, I'm an artist, I'm a writer, that's just never going to be my life. So I have to find a balance between my love of beauty and my love of luxury and what I can afford. But what I'm committed to doing is to finding that balance. I'm not ready to just buy a bunch of ugly stuff or concede to owning skincare that I'm not excited about using just because it works and is cheap. I still want to be excited about my things. I still want to love the things that I own. I still want everything I own to spark joy. And as well as this sunscreen works, and you should know that if you, unlike me, are into the idea of a brand called Super Goop, if you think it's really cute, if you like the utilitarian bottle, if you like the fun font, if that's you, and that's fine, you do you, to each her own, if that's you, you should know that this is a great sunscreen at a great price, and I do highly recommend it. I just am not gonna buy it because I don't feel excited about using it. I don't want that bottle on my vanity. I don't want super goop 
on my face. Am I the worst? Am I, I feel like maybe 30% of you out there are gonna be like, yeah, girl, I totally feel you. I'm like you, I get you. And the other 70% are gonna be like, you crazy chick. Supergoop, weirdly, was probably the front runner of the five things that I tested from Sephora. It probably, in a blind test, would have been the winner, but it's canceled because of the aesthetic of the brand and because of the packaging. How did I get myself into this, filming myself confessing to the internet what a snob I am about packaging? How did I end up here? How, how is this my life? The last thing I'll say about that is that I'm not criticizing Supergoop's branding because I think that they know their market. I think that they're branded beautifully. It's very cohesive. The conceptual thrust of the brand is incredibly clear and well thought out and well designed and successful. I admire the, the brand. I admire the brand even more now that I've tried their skin soothing mineral sunscreen and found it to be so effective. So Supergoop is great. I think they're great. I'm just not their target audience and I feel that. And that's how it goes with branding. The more successful you brand for your target audience, the more sure it is that you're going to lose people around the edges who aren't your target audience because you're branding for something that isn't their bag. And that's what's happening with me and Supergoop. And it's totally fine. It's just how it is. Okay, so the last sunscreen that I sampled from Sephora, the last thing that I mentioned in my intro video was the Kula Mineral Face SPF Cucumber Matte. So this product is also on the high end in terms of cost among all of the ones that I tried. It costs the exact same amount as the Pharmacy Green Screen. It breaks down to $21 an ounce. And the sample that I got was kind of crumbly and dry in the little container. I showed it to you in my original video. And one of you in the comments said that you had this product and that it wasn't crumbly like that for you. So I think I probably got kind of a squirt from the bottom of the barrel. I think the product in the tester in the store was probably on its last legs and was starting to dry up a little bit. I still feel like I was able to get a sense of how the product performs because even though it was a little bit crumbly in there, the crumbles sort of melted onto my hands and like melted into my skin and I was able to apply it just fine. But I found it to be really mattifying and I have dry skin and I'm, I'm just kind of not into that. I, I didn't want to be putting something that was like so proactively mattifying on my skin every single day as my required step in my skincare routine. So that was probably the main nail in the coffin of this product. But on top of that, I had a really hard time working with it. And again, it might have been because it was a little bit dried out. So if you're interested in this product, don't take my experience as gospel. But for me, it pilled. It pilled like an ill-performing primer. And it, it actually behaved in every way like a primer that didn't suit my skin type. And I know that some people really love this product, so it might be something that's very, very skin type dependent. And obviously if you have a fresh bottle, it might be different, but I only got like three uses out of this and every single time I really, really struggled with it because it fought with my primer, it pilled, it was so matte. And I think this was probably the one that came in in last place. Like I really, really genuinely couldn't work with it. And there was one day that I actually had to remove it from my skin and start over with something else. It was pretty clear to me just from the description and from being able to touch it in the store and use it a little bit that it's just not designed for me. And so that was a pretty obvious decision. It was a clear no. So those were those five. But the story has a surprise ending because here's what happened. I posted that video and then I started sampling these sunscreens. And when I posted that video, I got so many amazing recommendations. Thank you guys so much. It was really exciting. I checked out everything. I read through all of your comments and I linked through to everything and I read the descriptions and I read reviews and I learned a lot about 
different kinds of sunscreen that I didn't know about before. And I was like, wow, I'm gonna have to do a whole second round of testing. I'm gonna acquire all of these other samples and I'm gonna do like a second video introducing other samples and I'm gonna be really thorough about it. It's gonna be so exciting. I, I was really excited to kind of follow up on all of your recommendations. So I went about starting to do that. And one of the most intriguing ones, and the first one that I decided to take action on, was the recommendation to try the peptide mineral sunscreen from the brand Aaron's Faces. And I had never heard of Aaron's Faces before. And thank you so much to the subscriber who recommended it, because I believe you also said in your comment that it's an indie brand, and Aaron, who owns it, is very responsive on Instagram and Facebook and very kind of willing to help. I checked out the website, and they do offer samples, but you have to buy them. And I, I can't. Like, my rules are very clear. I can't buy things. And I'm not one to kind of, like, elbow room into my rules just for convenience sake, even if the sample was only $3. I was not about to feel like I had cheated even slightly on my no buy year by buying a little sample. So initially I was like, well, if I have to buy the sample, then I, I can't sample this. But then because of the subscriber comment that said that they were very responsive, I actually emailed them through the info box on their website and I explained the situation. I was like, listen, I'm doing this no buy year. I really want to sample your sunscreen, but I can't buy it. Is there any chance you might be willing to send it to me? And they did. They sent me the sample. It arrived in like two or three days. So I, I must say I was skeptical. I am really interested in trying out indie brands next year for makeup. I've kind of been sleeping on indie brands up to this point. And something about my no buy year and my detox from buying makeup from big brands and detox from buying makeup from stores like Sephora has made me reassess my values a little bit and one of the things that has changed is that suddenly I've become much more interested in supporting indie brands and seeing what they have to offer. So next year you can expect me to be reviewing a lot more things from indie makeup brands. But indie skincare brands, I've always been a little bit... I've always been like, well, how much science can there really be? Do they have the technology, the labs? Like, do they have access to the... You know, I'm just... I'm so protective of my skin. I invest so thoroughly in my skin. And I just have always been like a snob about indie skincare on some level. So when I first got it, I took it, I took it out of its package. I dabbed a little onto the back of my skin and I was talking to Joe. I remember we were like sitting in our kitchen and I was idly, we were chatting and I was kind of idly doing it. And I was like, hmm. and then I was like, Ugh. and he was like, what? And I was like, look, this is amazing. Like I would, you could have knocked me over with a feather. The formula is unexpected. The way that it performs is unexpected, but so, so good for me. By now you might be guessing the surprise end of the story, which is that this is the sunscreen that I went ahead and purchased, and I actually have it right here. This is the little bottle. It's not gigantic looking, but it's four ounces. That's bigger than any of the containers of sunscreen of any of the other brands that I have reviewed. It's also expensive. It's $50, but that breaks down to $12 an ounce. So that is right on par with the least expensive of all of the five that I reviewed from Sephora. So the Super Goop one was the other one that was $12 an ounce. And if my no buy year has taught me anything about value, it has taught me to pay more attention to the cost per ounce than to the cost of the bottle. So let's go through my requirements and I'll tell you about how this meets all of them with flying colors. It is an all mineral sunscreen, obviously, and actually the active ingredients are titanium dioxide and non-nano zinc oxide. I think the bottle is really sweet. It's very simple and it's got this little illustration on it. The bottle also has the feel of something from an indie brand. It feels a little bit like hand illustrated and that reminds me every time I'm using it that I am supporting a small woman owned and independently owned company. So it's cosmetically elegant in terms of the bottle and the presence of the product in my life. 
it is cosmetically elegant in terms of the formula as well. I don't want to waste very much of it, but I'll show it to you. This bottle is actually a good format because I like to shake it up. It's not very watery. It's kind of like a middle consistency between like watery and lotiony. So it comes out, yeah, again, like kind of like a thick drip. So it's not dripping down my hand. It's not that watery, but it's also definitely not as thick as, for example, the, the pharmacy green screen was a lot thicker than this. And when you start to rub it in, for a moment, it seems like it's not going to rub in. I don't think you can see very well. I think I'll do better just to tell you. Basically, it sits on the skin and for about five or 10 seconds, it looks like you're just rubbing slightly watery white lotion around. It's almost like it's streaky, like you can see the streaks of product as your finger moves through it. And then all of a sudden, it's gone. It's gone, it's like, right into the skin and suddenly the skin is like beautifully kind of calm with a very very slight tack absolutely no cast at all and no presence no greasiness it feels like applying a serum it feels exactly like applying a really really good moisturizing serum i actually find that on days when i need to save time I can pretty much go right in with my primer. Like I'll still give it one or two minutes, but I've found that I can sort of stay sitting at my vanity and just do a couple of things and then go right in with my makeup instead of having to like get up and walk around and give it time. And the price, the price cannot be beat. $12 an ounce, fantastic. So that is why, and this is what I've kind of been trying to get to, that is why I didn't go on to sample more things. And I thought about it. I was like, oh, I have so many great recommendations. You guys were amazing. You really came through. But I was so happy with the way that this performed and so happy with the price. And then there's the other aspect of it, which is that it's from an indie brand and a woman owned brand at that. I am an independent brand owner. I mean, I, I know that most of you guys know this, but we have a little Shopify website that Joe and I run. I model the clothes, we take the product shots, Joe works on the product shots, I write the product descriptions, we upload the photographs of our 20 new pieces every Thursday, and then we sit there chewing our nails, hoping that we'll make enough sales that week to keep our little business going. And so to be able to buy something that I love, that checks all of my boxes, that beat out these five Sephora brand sunscreens, to be able to order that from a woman like me, a company like mine, there was just no doubt in my mind and I, I didn't feel like I would get anything out of continuing to search. Hi, this is future Hannah in my bathrobe filming some extra information to edit into the sunscreen video. I don't know why I was so distracted when I was filming the end of that video, but I completely failed to mention anything about the Erin Spaces sunscreen, except for the fact that I like the texture and the way that it performs and the price. But there are a couple of other really important things that I wanted to say about it. And the first one, and the one that I can't believe that I forgot, is that it has significant skincare benefits. It's clearly a hybrid sunscreen and skincare product. I mean, in my opinion, sunscreen is a skincare product, but you understand what I'm saying. It is a peptide product. The peptides in it are in the form of Matrixyl 3000, which I believe is a proprietary anti-aging blend. I currently incorporate peptides into my skincare by using a peptide serum. I use Buffet, which is kind of like a multi-peptide serum from The Ordinary. Now, Buffet is called Buffet because it has an array of proprietary peptides in it, but one of them is Matrixyl 3000. So this product contains Matrixyl 3000 as one of its groups of amino acids, one of its groups of peptides, and that is also what's in this. So I just wanna have peptides somewhere in my routine, and just having Matrixyl 3000 and just having it in this product is enough for me. So that's really exciting because I'm trying to simplify my skincare routine, both to save money and to save time. For now, I will continue to use this bottle of Buffet. I'll use it until it's used up. I usually use it in the morning, but when it's used up, I won't replace it. I won't be buying another peptide serum. I consider this to be a 
a peptide serum and a sunscreen in one. This product is also made with aloe leaf and aloe gel and cucumber and a couple of other ingredients that are anti-inflammatory and skin soothing. It is also formulated without parabens, fragrance, petrochemicals. The other thing that I forgot to mention is that Erin's Faces really prides itself on being a clean beauty brand. So those are yet more reasons why I feel really good about using this product and really good about supporting this brand. I also do recommend, of the five that I sampled, the Pharmacy Green Screen. I think that's a fantastic product as well. And the Super Goop Skin Soothing Mineral Sunscreen. So of the six that I tried, those are my three top runners. I would probably give this one the gold, obviously. I would probably give Pharmacy Green Screen the silver and Supergoop Skin Soothing Mineral Sunscreen the bronze. So those are my three recommendations. This is my top recommendation. The search for the best mineral sunscreen is over and so is this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll remember to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Bye.